What's up everybody, this is Carl from Tech for Goodies and today we're doing a bit of a DIY project. I was really looking for something to do kind of with my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. It's not a super powerful sort of board, but what I wanted to do was be able to use this to make one of those really cool YouTube subscriber screens that sort of shows your statistics and stuff from your YouTube channel. So I went ahead and simplified that. So I tried many, many things, right? I started out with like a little LED name badge. Then I went ahead and bought like an LED panel. And then I went ahead and bought another LED panel, but they all didn't particularly work out the way I wanted to because a lot of them used their own proprietary apps and I couldn't figure out a good way or an easy way to have them update in real time. So when I was on AliExpress, I started to notice these widescreen monitors, something similar to this. And this is just basically a display panel that will adapt to HDMI. So I said, yeah, sure, let's give it a try. So I went ahead and picked one up. And the reason I did was because it has not only HDMI input, but it also has USB power. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2W also has an HDMI output and an additional USB power uh, slash data port here on the side. So I started to do some experiments with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and found that it was horribly underpowered for really anything I wanted to do. So I spent a lot of time testing different things. I put Raspberry Pi OS on there. I put another OS that's specifically just for displaying a website, but I wanted a little bit more freedom to be able to load whatever website I wanted at whatever time I wanted. Now in general, to sort of spark your creative juices, this is simply just an HDMI monitor, okay? So you can hook this straight up to your PC or computer, set it to the side, and then completely control it from your computer. You don't have to use a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W or any sort of other board specifically for it, but I wanted it kind of as a standalone device that did its own thing. But anyway, what I have on my desk here is, like I said, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And I also have the display adapter board that came with the monitor. And this has HDMI in and power in. And all you have to do is hook this little ribbon cable up right here to the back of the display monitor here. And then you will be able to plug in HDMI. And this is a mini HDMI port and you can display whatever you want. So I'll give you, I'll show you an example of that. I'll also show you setting up the final version because I did go ahead and print multiple sort of test versions of this on my printer and then ended up specifically with this one here and the front sort of clips on so I can put all the parts in there. And if you see here, you can actually see I put in some uh, standoffs and some mounting brackets into the print itself. Now, before we go too far into setting this Raspberry Pi up, as far as the software stuff goes, I actually wanted to test the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and just hook this screen up to my laptop here. It's straight out of the box. This is exactly how you would hook this up if you didn't want to use the Raspberry Pi. So basically on the bottom here, you take this little ribbon cable. And if you look at the ribbon cable here, you can actually see that there is a sort of contact side and then sort of a blue side. The contact side goes down and there is a little tiny sort of lever here. It's gonna be really difficult to see on the screen, but all you have to do is lift that up and then you can slide in the ribbon cable into here. All right, so once you have it seated, you go ahead and flip down this little switch or the little lockdown and give it a little tug to see if it's locked in, and it is, okay? So now this screen is ready to go. I'm gonna flip it over. My Raspberry Pi came with this little adapter. It's a full-size HDMI to a mini HDMI. So I'll go ahead and use that. And then I'll use just a normal HDMI cable coming from my laptop to this. And once I plug this in, it will not work. And the reason because, and I've said this a million times in my videos, HDMI doesn't have the appropriate amount of power to power a screen like this, which is why you have another power port here that you can use to power the display. Now, once we plug in the micro USB, the screen should automatically get power and you can see that it does. And the first thing you'll notice is that it is sideways on here. Now this is a 400 by 1280 screen. And what that means is you'll initially get a display that's sideways like this, but you can rotate it. So I will jump into Windows here and under the display settings, I will first of all, not duplicate these displays. I will extend these displays. 
And now you can see that because now that it is a sort of independent display, it's now using up the full size of the screen. If you wanna use it in that vertical display mode, you can. A lot of people use these for system sort of monitors and stuff for their PC builds, but I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this. Now, the way you do that is you select your second screen here. As you can see, it's kind of a tall, skinny uh, monitor. So what we'll go ahead and down here and you can actually rotate this and I'm gonna use landscape flipped here, keep changes. And there you go. So I'm literally just displaying my whole desktop right on this little tiny monitor. Now, again, like I said, if you wanted to, you could stop there and display anything you want. So you can kind of start to see exactly how this is going to work. In fact, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and display my custom page that I set up. So let me go ahead and do that. Hit F11. And there it is. Now you can simply see how easy it was for me to display this on this screen. I didn't have to go through a ton of different steps to try to get the Raspberry Pi set up, but I wanted to, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now I have my screen set up, I have it ready for HDMI, and it's all good to go. Now this sort of dashboard that I made here that you see on my screen, I actually created that in a simple HTML page using the Google API. Google has an API for YouTube, and you can use APIs for whatever you want, but I specifically wanted to do that. I'll leave some information down below on how you can set that up, but it's simply just behind the scenes sort of pulling that API information, and it just sort of shows kind of your subscriber count. It shows your views, your videos, and stuff like that. You can get deeper into it, but I just went super simple, and I might go deeper in the future. So setting this up with the Raspberry Pi. As I said, I put an image onto the TF card and put it into my Raspberry Pi and booted it up. What I had to do after that was install a desktop. When I choose the light version of Raspberry Pi, the older version of Debian, it didn't come with a desktop. It just came with a straight terminal interface, okay? So what I did was choose the XFCE desktop environment, and that was very easy to install. I'll leave the information below. If you're comfortable with Linux command line, you can go and do that. So I went ahead and installed that, and what that did was give me a super lightweight desktop that I could go ahead and load onto the Raspberry Pi. And then I also installed the Epiphany browser. Now, when I tried to use Chromium browser, that's default for most of these systems, it was so slow, it was unusable. And it literally took me minutes upon minutes of just sitting, staring at it, just to have anything typed on the screen. And then the other thing that I did was I went into the Raspberry Pi config, open up a terminal, type in raspi-config, and it will open up the configuration. What that allows you to do is set up a VNC. What VNC allows you to do is use your main computer to literally log into the Raspberry Pi and it will display exactly what's being shown on the screen and you can act, interact with it just like it's a normal computer on your main computer. I'll show you all this stuff, but first thing I wanna do is set this up and show you how all this goes together with my custom 3D printed housing. So I'm going ahead and disconnect this. And as you can see, I went through many, many iterations of kind of testing to make sure that things lined up with 3D printing. Sometimes things don't line up correctly. So you want to kind of do some draft prints and see like, for example, this one doesn't fit together correctly and I had to use tape, but this one does as a sort of friction fit. So first thing we do is we take the base here and this is the spot for the Raspberry Pi. I had to make sure that there was room at the bottom for the cables to come out. So let's go ahead and screw this in. Now, while I do have four screw holes here, I'm just gonna use the diagonals. All right, so that's now screwed in there. And I also wanna screw in the computer board. And these are just little mini screws that I had sitting around, small screws from different projects or from computers. All right, so now both of the boards have been screwed into place and I'm gonna hook up the cables. And if you look on the back here, I went ahead and added a few slots here for 
uh, sort of heat dissipation. Now there's nothing going on on this board other than displaying a web page, so there shouldn't be any problem with heat, but I just put that in there for airflow. And I put a little place here for me to be able to put the power cord in because you need one power coming in to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi will feed power to the display board, okay? So I have my Raspberry Pi power cord right here. You can see one side is normal USB. The other side is a micro USB. And I obviously made the hole in the back here big enough to be able to slide this through. So I'll pull this over to the side out of the way. And I'll go ahead and disconnect this too, because it's a little annoying to have this connected while I'm trying to set this up, because I will want to use the cowl on the front here for the monitor. So micro HDMI adapter. I could not find a cable that was micro HDMI to micro HDMI. So I had to use that. And again, I don't like soldering. So that's my problem, but I don't like to solder. So I went ahead and used all these little cables inside here since I was gonna have it enclosed. Now I will go ahead and twist this cable around just a little bit so that it will fit correctly. All right, so I've got the HDMI hooked up. Now I wanna hook up my micro USB cable, mail to mail here, hook that up to the board here, and also hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. It's the second one. So the second one here is for data and power, and this is for power in. And then one last thing to hook up, which is the power cable coming in. All right, so you can see, it's pretty tidy in there, not too bad, uh, shouldn't be an issue. My only concern would be maybe this cord here touching the processor, but at the same time, I can go ahead and tuck this down here in the corner, keep it out of the way, which is good. And then I have my cable coming out to the power. So let's go ahead and give this a try, make sure I hooked everything up correctly. We will power it up. All right, so it's loading into the operating system. I have it automatically launching the browser with like a startup routine and then going in and heading F11 for me so that when I do load this up, it'll just automatically load this be by default and not have any issues and be set up and ready to go in case it's a power outage or something like that. Now, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and VNC, like I talked about earlier, into this. And I'll go ahead and show you uh, an example of that. I use real VNC. So just load in real VNC, put in the IP address of the device, the Raspberry Pi connected to your home network. So all you have to do is go in here and enter a VNC server, which is my IP address. And there we go. Now you can see I'm actually seeing what's on my screen here. So anything I do on my computer here will also show on the screen here. So let's go ahead and hit F11. And that takes it out of full screen mode. And I'll go ahead and minimize the browser. And you can see, I can see the full desktop here. So everything's working here as we hooked it up. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and put in the front bezel right now and get everything set up. And that should be about it. And I did not friction fit this with this monitor because I didn't want to damage it. So I have to use a little bit of tape to be able to put this in there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set it in. It does have a lip for it to be able to sit in here. And you can see how it sits on the front here. And I really wanna just kind of a set it and forget it type of device because I didn't wanna mess around with it. But again, like I said, I can always log in and change what is on the display. So I set it in here, you can see how it fits kind of into the display itself. Now I am gonna use tape to keep this monitor in. Like I said, I could have used the friction fit, but I did not want to damage the screen. Uh, because I don't know how much pressure it can take. But this is inside the box, so no one can really see this anyway. And then once everything's all hooked up, I will go ahead and pop the front on here to make it one closed up unit. And there we go. A full setup sub ticker that I can kind of toss back here on my desk that doesn't blink, doesn't have any issues, and I can control remotely 100%. And so I'm pretty happy with this result. And this is version one. I might go ahead and readdress this and make another version in the future. I might try an e-ink or an e-paper version of this. I know the project like this can be difficult and when you're trying to follow someone else's tutorial, sometimes it gets a little confusing and I can't spend the entire time just giving every little detail about what's going on, but I'll try to leave that down in the description below. 
Other than that, I think this is a pretty successful project here. I'm pretty happy with it. If you like this, if this helped you out, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'd love to see you back. But until next time, this is Carl from Tech for Goodies, and I'm out.